In this tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how you can take your initials or any series of letters and use them to create a logo where the letters overlap each other. And to follow along with what I'm doing here in this tutorial, I'm going to recommend that you download and install this font that I used for this logo design because this font works really well for this sort of thing. So check the description of the video for a download link to that font and install it before you launch Inkscape and then you'll be good to go. So let's get rid of this and we'll get started here. I'm going to grab my text tool and I'm going to click on the canvas and I'm going to use the letters C and B for this demonstration. I found that these letters work really well together, but this works with pretty much any letter as long as you're using this font. And I'm going to select the letters and I'll open up my text editor by going to text and going to text and font. And the font I'm looking for is called winner. So I'm going to type that in and apply it. And now we have the font applied. So let me collapse this menu. I'm going to grab my selection tool and I'm going to increase the size of this. I'm going to hold my control key while I do that so we can scale it up proportionately and I'm going to place it in the center of the page. So now let's convert this from a text object to a path by going to path and selecting object to path and then we want to split the letters apart. So I'll go back to the path menu and I will choose split path and now we have two separate letters and I'll zoom in on this so you can see it better. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to take this letter C and I'm going to collapse its height and then elongate it so that it can intertwine with this letter B here. And to do that, we're going to use the nodes tool. So let me select the letter and then I'll come over to my nodes tool and I'm going to click and drag over these nodes to select them. And then I'm going to click and drag them down. I'm going to hold my control key while I do that and click and drag to bring these nodes down like this. We want this letter C to fit within this letter B. Uh, and in order to do that, we need to shrink that down. Now, a problem I'm running into here is that this part of the design, this part of the letter anyway, is starting to collapse in on itself. So I'm going to move these up a little bit. I'm going to select just these nodes right here, and I'm going to use my arrow keys to move them up. I'm going to use my up arrow key, and I'm going to count the number of steps that I used to move these nodes because I want to move these nodes over here down by the same number of steps. So I'm going to press the up arrow key, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 15 times and I'll do the same thing down here. I'm going to select these nodes and I'll move them down 15 steps as well. One, two, three, four. And we do that just to maintain the symmetry. So let me grab my selection tool now and I'm going to move this letter over here and put it on top of the letter B where I would like it to be. And I'll go back to my nodes tool and I'm just going to use the nodes tool to select these nodes and adjust the size of this some more. So I'm going to hold control while I do this so it locks it onto the horizontal axis while I move these nodes. And I'm going to collapse this down a little more. What I'm paying attention to right here is where the arm of the C intersects with the um, negative space of the letter B here. I want this to be roughly halfway through. So let me move this up a little bit. And now it looks like it's going about halfway through. And I'll do the same thing to these top nodes over here. I'll move these ones down. And again, I'm holding control the whole time I do this to make sure that we're locking it onto the vertical axis. And what I'll do now is I'll grab my selection tool and I will select both of these letters and I'm going to open up my alignment menu by going over to object and selecting align and distribute. And I want to choose last selected and I'm just going to make sure that they are aligned horizontally and vertically. And then I'll collapse this menu. And what we could do now is I'm going to make a duplicate copy of these two letters. So I'm going to right click them and go to duplicate. And I want to make offset copies of these. So with them selected, I'm going to go to path and I'm going to select outset. And that's going to increase the offset of the letters. And I'm going to do that a couple of more times. Uh, this offset represents the spacing that's going to be between the letters when they're overlapping each other. So depending on how large or small it is, you may want to repeat this step a few more times. I'm going to repeat this one more time. I'm going to choose outset. And maybe I'll do it one more time just because I have my letters pretty large. I'll go to path outset and now that's looking much bigger than the original letters. So what we want to do now is let's click and drag over everything. We want to select everything and now we can use the shape builder tool to morph this into what we want it to be. So I'm going to come over here to the shape builder tool and I'm going to zoom in on this and I want to make sure I have the plus icon selected here, the add option. And now I can just click and drag through the areas of the design and shape it how I would like it to be shaped. So I'm going to click and drag through this part of the design right here because I want this part of the letter B to overlap this part of the letter C. And then I want this part of the letter C to overlap the letter B over here. And then we get that effect. So I'll come down here and repeat this, but the opposite way. I'm going to make this part overlap and then I'll make this part overlap. And then I'm going to click on this part right here to highlight it in blue. 
Now it's important that you highlight everything that you want to keep in blue. You have to click on it to highlight it in blue. And if you don't do that, it's gonna be deleted once you're finished. So everything that's gray is gonna be deleted. Everything that's not blue is gonna be deleted. And once you're finished, you can press the check mark button up here. And just like that, we have created an interlocking letter logo using the Shape Builder tool in Inkscape. If you found this lesson useful, then consider checking out my Inkscape Masterclass. It's a collection of over 60 videos where I go over all of the tools and features in Inkscape, and I explain what they are and demonstrate how they work. Kind of like how I did in this video. We even have a private community where you can ask questions and get help from me anytime you want. And best of all, there's no monthly membership fees. You just pay $17 one time and you're in for life. I'll have some information about that down below if you want to check that out. As always, thanks for watching.